Hi, hello, and welcome to Man with a Mentor. I am your host, the man, Matthew Barnard. You may be wondering what Man with a Mentor may be about. And it's about me talking to um, interesting people with fascinating careers and how they got to where they are today. And I am sitting here today with Jen Perkins. Hi. 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 Um, and you are, I'm going to like read this, mm -hmm. um, is an artist, therapeutic art instructor, environmental designer, and muralist with degrees from Columbus College of Art and Design. Correct. All right. Correct. And we're going to start with what you currently have going on. Okay. Yeah. So I have a 25 piece show that is a oh. collaboration show at the uh, downtown Metro Public Library here in Dayton, Ohio. Right. Um, the second floor gallery. And it is a show called Time Passages that connects past and present um, with materials, subject matter, Greek mythology, um, the interpersonal relationships between women, and... Um, lots of different materials and techniques. Oh, wow. And this is with someone from mm -hmm. Greece, Greece, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Now explain that connection. Um, her name is Maggie Ross, and uh, we met back in 2007 in Portland, Oregon. Um, so I've, I'm a transplant here. Right. Although I was born in Ohio, I moved away uh, in 96, right after I got out of college, and I was like... See ya. Right. So yeah, I moved. You've got to explore when you're from Ohio. Yeah, I yeah. and then I had already lived abroad before I, you know, uh, when I was uh, a little. But um, I moved to Prague after I graduated, and I was there for three years. And then after you live in Central Europe, you don't go back and live in Ohio. So I kind of made a pit stop here and saw family and friends, and then. Um, drove all the way out to Portland and just didn't look back and didn't really ever think I was ever going to move back, which is the funny thing. Oh, right. So spent about 13 years there. And in that time, um, in 2007, I met Maggie when we were um, auditioning for a band. And so she was a, a bassist and I'm a drummer. And Was um, it an all-girl all band? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you could have been the Go-Go's redo. Yeah. Like we our our styles didn't mesh, right? But Maggie and I hit it off really well, and um, I found out that she was a sculptor and she'd been sculpting uh, limestone in Indiana and in Austin, and she had just moved to Portland about a year prior, maybe from Austin. All right. And um, yeah, we ended up. I'm like, hey, you want to get a studio together? And so we shared a studio right. for about a year, I want to say, um, and then. Um, she ended up um, going to Greece for for advanced uh, marble sculpting, you know, classes, workshops, like summer. Like she was there for for months. She sold all this stuff and financed her journey and took off. And uh, like oh. I was very encouraging. I'm like, go, like you know, what do you have to lose? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it's Greece. It's yeah. Not, like you know. So she upper Norway or somewhere, you know. So she so <laughs> she left and um and then I saw her in 2008 and then she drove back to Indiana and hung out there for the winter and saved up more money and went back in 2009 and then she's been there ever since. Mm. That's exciting. Ever though. since. So yeah. sculpting and sculpting and she teaches workshops and um like human sculpting or just anything, everything? Uh, all, all kinds of stuff. Oh. All kinds of stuff. So gotcha. she makes a lot of like, you know, commissions. She's got stuff. She's got stuff all over the world. Like people commission her to, to make things and she ships stuff everywhere. Um, oh my gosh. So uh, very prolific. Yeah. You know, and very talented. Right. And on, on some little island. Yeah. Naxos. Uh, right. Assassin's Creed call it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't know what that is. All right. Um, let's go back, though, like to your journey mm -hmm. of like when you were little. Yeah. And you, like when did you, did you, were you just obsessed with art or did it come later? Or no. Or you just knew? Like, I, I mean, as soon as I could just, as soon as I could hold pencils or crayons, I was drawing and um, I started, which is funny because like I paint murals on walls and I started drawing and stuff on walls as a child. <laughs> so your mom was like, 
should I discourage this or yell about it? <laughs> I no, I mean I never got in trouble for it. Um, you know, it was easy to paint over, but I but I drew in my bedroom and then when we were moving out of the house, um, they looked behind all of the drapes in the living room and I had drawn behind all the drapes in the living room too. <laughs> So, and at that point, I was about four and five years old, um, I was really into drawing um, cephalopods, which is a developmental stage in art where it's a head with the the hand, the arms and the legs coming out of the face, and then oh. I would draw top hats on oh. them. I was really into top hats. Uh, and then sometimes fangs. Let me ask you about um, how your art works and how you pull in principles of metaphysics mm -hmm. into that and what that means to you and the audience yeah. and me because I don't know what it means. Okay. <laughs> um, well, years ago, um, this is when I was living in Prague, I started reading a lot of, about quantum physics and um, time travel and black holes. And I've experienced a lot of um, interesting things most of my life. Um, so I'm very kind of a person who is able to um, tune into different time periods on my own. Mm -hmm. um, like I will, I was downtown uh, working on a mural at the Dayton Beer Company and I was in their, um, it's actually the Dayton Barrel Company so that it's where they have their big distiller and everything and I looked out and for just a few I don't know, like a minute or less, I saw like horses and like, I saw a scene from like 150 years ago. Just like, I'm able to just, it's like a, a movie. And I'm just right. like click into these little, like I'm able to just pick up on other facets, other dimensions that right. are happening simultaneously because there is no such thing as time. So I've been very tuned in to um, these kinds of things like my whole life. And I've seen um, ghosts like, like flat out, like I've seen people almost as solid as you appear to me just in broad daylight in the middle of the day. And this is in downtown Portland too, by the way. Right, right. So <laughs> just, um, you know. So how uh, does that, how does that like, funnel into your, well, your uh, creation? Well, with a lot of pieces that I've done in the past, and even this one here, right. transmission, it's called, this is called Transmissions mm -hmm. Available. Right. Um, and um, this is just one little snippet on, in the large, you know, scale that, of work that I do. But I, I love to, tr to try and um, represent the, um, like, if you think of time, like a um, like a film strip, and then right. the light passes through that film strip, and each film and each little s still is something a little different. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how we're operating, a little bit. And I love and I actually experienced that visually when I was on a beach uh, in Oregon years ago. Uh, with a friend and I s just saw it in front of me and I could see this like it was the most um, like intense experience um, and I have always tried to convey I was really obsessed with that imagery for years and trying to convey that hmm. um, through symbols and imagery and the shapes and um, you know a lot of people resonated with that um, I pretty much sold all those pieces that that I did uh, that with. You said you've sold a lot of pieces. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of artists, I feel like sometimes they want to sell their pieces. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to parting with them, mm -hmm. they're like, oh no, I love that one. It's got a. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to feel like that. Um, I did feel like that about a bunch of things because um, it. Uh, a lot of my things for years were, it was really personal. And it was okay. just like too, em I was so emotionally attached. Right. Um, and now, um, you know, just it's there's like this strange like separation, I suppose. Um, and like but I did just sell a piece on this past Sunday, um, which was great. And it was a piece that everybody was loving. And a lot of people had, you know, oh, I want to buy it. I want to buy it. And I, anyways, finally, someone did. And oh, right. I was really happy about it. Um, now, 
Do you want to tell me about being a therapeutic art instructor and what that means instead of just being an art instructor? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, I do teach art as well. Um, and I was teaching full time for a number of years. Um, part of my uh, degree in college was art therapy. At the time when I graduated, um, there weren't very many programs for art therapy. And, it, right. and, and also at the time, it wasn't a, a viable, like, I wouldn't have had any job opportunities. <laughs> Let's just say that. Right. Here's been, your degree. No, seriously, I wouldn't this have. This many jobs. <laughs> seriously. No, but back then, we're talking in the 90s, people just weren't. Right. They weren't. It, it's like the culture had to catch up with the benefits that art can help. You right. know, with so um, so I can't call myself an art therapist because I'm not licensed and I don't right. have my master's degree in that. But right. um, with the therapeutic arts, I've brought it to a lot of adults, um, and it's creating and it's allowing them to create or to be in a flow state. So it's using a lot of different kinds of paints and inks that. Um, that allow adults to play and to connect to their childlike brain and their sense of childlike wonderment and the what ifs and oh, what if I do this and what if I do that? And um, as normal working adults in normal lives, um, they don't, most people don't go to experience that. Right. We kind of put that behind us, but it's, it's like if it's joyful when you're a child, I don't know why we put it behind us. If it can be equally joyful yeah. as we grow older. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but some That's people, um, one of the things that I, what I, what I do when I, when I do this is that I'm just like, let go of your expectations. We're not trying to, um, you know, we're not trying to paint the Mona Lisa. We're just here to have fun and, right. and, 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 you know, just let just let yourself have fun and people you'd be surprised people have a really hard time doing that and even for me just as an artist like I understand how that is because for the years I've always been like it has to have this and this and this and right. the message and the, the deep and, you know and, and right. I'm so serious and, uh, right right yeah. and and <laughs> <laughs> so now I I I'm I'm I have a whole new series that I'm starting because based on what I experienced doing the work with Maggie. So oh. I'm really excited and it it involves toys. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, like rubber duckies and or, uh and, like um well. I got wind up toys but then I took them apart and um Barbies. I have these ideas and so I literally just put a, a call out on Facebook yesterday saying, Hey, does anyone have any old Barbies they want to get rid of? Right, right, right. I'm going to play right. with Barbies again, but right. in a different way. Right. I was just wondering, in terms of being an art teacher, do you feel like a mentor for kids? like, Or do you mm -hmm. feel like you're just like their teacher and uh, then you well, let it go? Um, I, in the past, definitely, I've, I've felt like I was a mentor, especially when I was teaching full time to certain students who would come in. Um, and um, I did spend many two and a half years working at the Miami, uh, Montgomery County Juvenile Detention Center. So in, in that respect, um, I wanted to give kids there a glimpse of careers that are creative, that can earn them money legally, and that won't hurt anybody. And, you know, I feel like I, I opened up a lot of people's uh, minds in that yeah. respect of like, what are the possibilities? Like, you know, and I would come in and you know, uh, tell them about, um, my husband and I did a lot of the, the Get Air murals in town, like Miamisburg right. and Huber Heights and all that. And so really large commercial projects. And so the kids were like their eyes, cause they'd all been to Get Air and like, yeah, I'm like, we painted all that. No way, oh my God. Like, cause you know, it's big, really big right. stuff. Right. And um, you know, and I would tell them, you know, how much we got paid and stuff. And they were just like mind blown. Like you got paid that much for, for making art and I'm like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and honestly like hindsight right it wasn't enough but um for <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't we should have gotten way more oh. but either way um right he got a really good deal let's just say that but the kids thought it was this giant amount and at the time it sounded really good but you know um it doesn't you know things money doesn't go as far as it used to 
No. Right? So, but um, either way, the kids just always, they really respond to that when you can give real life examples of like, this is what I do. I don't just teach. I actually have a career and I, you know, I work outside of school because, um, and which is one of the reasons I stopped teaching full time is because it's, you know, you're married to it and right. it takes a lot yeah. out of you. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I wanted, I wanted something left of me with my own children when I go home at the end of the day and not to be stressed out and crabby and exhausted and right so right leave the crabbiness to me <laughs> no um i'm just wondering if people can find you online or somehow your yeah. work like yeah. do you have a i have instagram site? yeah instagram. i have instagram and um it's um jennifer.elementalstudio or something like that right um and then, i don't know so you <laughs> yeah i don't know either <laughs> Uh, Jennifer.elementalstudio, I think that's what it is. Uh, but we also have elementalstudiodayton.com. Okay. And that's my husband and I's website, which is a work in progress. Okay. So we're getting that worked on some more soon. And a lot of, um, just some of my more recent pieces um, that have sold are on there. Um, our mural work is on there. Oh, um, awesome. So. Yay. So yeah. I want people to find you. And if they need murals. And you got sure. you got to pay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pay scale involved. Yeah, that's right. Um, actually, yeah, I'm a I'm actually going to be doing um, pretty soon. I'll be doing a like a paint party, um, and so I do do that at the studio. Like I'll have people in to do the therapeutic arts. Well, I'm I'm excited that people. That's how people can find you. Yeah. And I was so excited to talk to you and learn more about art and how it all works and and how you process things and turn your experiences and ghosts and goblins <laughs> and whatever <laughs> into art so thank you so much for thank being you. here jennifer perkins at elemental what elemental is studio dayton.com that's it go visit her there and check out her art and thank you so much for being here i appreciate it and thank you for watching another episode of man with a mentor